Well, good evening and welcome to, I can't even remember what night it is of Daily Wrap, but it is another massive day of dressage. And joining me on the panel tonight, I've had the privilege and honour of working with this lady for many years at some of the biggest shows. Her first ever dressage event, why not drive straight in to the biggest <laughs> one there is, Lindsay Douglas, welcome to the first four star dressage competition you've ever been to. Oh, I'll tell you what, you've got a new fan in the dressage community in me. I've had an absolute blast uh, working here in the broadcast team. So exciting to see people around the grounds getting involved with the scoring, the huge applause uh, when you see a wonderful test and it's been a really enjoyable day. Today has been jam-packed though, so I feel like I'm getting dressage dementia. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a huge few days and what a start for you to be able to come in and learn from one of the best in the world in Dorothy Schneider last night. She was phenomenal in that masterclass. Unbelievable. I mean, we had a vast array of horses and riders in here over four hours um, and a massive crowd. There must have been two or three hundred people in here. Actually, 500, 500 people came through the gate here yesterday to watch the masterclass take place. What I loved about Dorothy was all about the basics. There was no tricks. Basics, hard work and uh, stick with it and you'll get to the top. Oh, she was so generous with her knowledge too and you could actually see incremental improvements in each of the riders as they were out here throughout their time with her. Well, one of the horses today, Quincy B, who was in the masterclass last night, got 9.7s for his canner work. Must have been the masterclass <laughs> yeah. last night. Ah, uh, the Schneider success factor. <laughs> it most certainly is. Now, keep an eye on our website because we're going to be releasing little snippets in, in fact, the entire masterclass throughout the year. So keep an eye at willingaparc.com.au. Well, it was great to see for the first time here at Willinga the junior competitors competing. The CDI classes, we have the junior, the young rider and the under 25 and of course the four star. And we watched today the wonderful uh, Jess Dertel and Gladstone MH on a 69.06 to take the first of the juniors. This is the next generation coming through. Oh, it was just a beautiful test today. Lovely to see them um, out there together. They just look like such a polished co polish combination and the judges rewarded that. Jess obviously uh, very well known in the show horse arena from Future Farms, has been a very successful rider, great to see her doing so well and uh, then the, uh, Anna, she's been here for the week earlier so put her in really great stem. Yeah that's right and uh, we, I mean there was quite a strong class there today and uh, she did stand out. We then went on to Jess, uh, sorry to Sophie Artup and Delray Sorrento, a 67.67 to take out the young rider, the CDI young rider. Of course, they were here last week. So this is their second go around and Sophie was a strong performer. She performed better in the second half of the last show kicking off show two in a great position. Yeah, absolutely. Not a, not a huge class out here today, um, but uh, she'll be pretty happy, I think, with that result, 67.647%. Uh, and uh, we really love this, uh, fostering that next generation because these are our Mary Hannahs of the future. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, and I'll tell you what, you talk about Australian dressage and there's a big conversation around the grounds throughout the duration of uh, Dressage by the Sea, but the future is bright here. We've got a lot of young talent coming through. Well, of course, Mary Warren. Uh, Mary has been so dominant. To think that this young lady won the Grand Prix Four Star Freestyle here last year, still eligible to compete in the under 25 with Mindara Park Ramadam, a 69.117 to win the under 25 class. And she is the ultimate dressage operator. <laughs> yeah, she sure is. And this story is such a great one. I mean, um, Ramadan, he's been out with injury for two years. He's the sire of two other of the dressage horses she's campaigning out here who have both had a pretty good run out here. And uh, Ramadan, and just to see, I think he's picked up four first places um, over the campaign here at Dressage by the Sea. And you wouldn't, you know, you, we take it for granted, but you wouldn't expect anything less from Mary. You can just see here, everything she does, she's pinpoint accurate. She does not let the judges deduct anything as they go around. She really keeps themselves at the top of the game. It really is a, a super performer. Yeah, absolutely. I just think someone's so young. She's got wonderful presence, wonderful precision, and uh, I'll tell you what, she's got a big applause today too. Rightly so. Well, Willinga Park is over 2,000 acres in size. It's not just about dressage. And earlier today, I caught up with uh, a man who has a very tough job in Chad Percival. Let's hear what he had to say. 
So when you first drive into Willinga Park, you realise you're not driving into any ordinary showground. It's an extraordinary property, some 2,000 acres. Down the front of the property, we have the 400 acres of what we call the main part of Willinga Park. Maintaining, monitoring and making sure that every part of this property works is the man standing beside me, Chad Percival. Chad, great to have you. Thanks Tim, it's great to be here. I'm here six or seven days a week, so that's what I love about the place. Chad, you're our general manager. You have probably the hardest job of everyone because you are Terry's right-hand man and being the right-hand man to one of the busiest men in the country means that you are the second busiest man in the country. Yeah, that's correct, Tim. Uh, my job involves uh, operations and looking after people like yourself, which is pretty hard to rein in, but that's part of the job and I certainly love it. Your background is horticulture. We have 10 acres of the most beautiful gardens you'll ever see anywhere in the country. Tell us a little bit about what we have here. Well, Tim, this garden was, was designed about 10 years ago. And it's been here for now, fully established for about seven. So and what you can see around us is, uh, you know, all the palm trees, which have been brought from the back of the property. There are cabbage tree palm. That sort of creates the microclimate, as you see now. We've got an abundance here of green and gold bell frogs and we've got a water system here that recirculates right through the property. So none of the plants here require any irrigation. They're all been well established. The gardens with the recycled waterfall create this most beautiful environment, don't they? They certainly do, Tim. Yes, before we used to have the irrigation system on like two or three times a week. Now that they've got their feet in, there's no, require, no requirement for any water. So most of the plants that we see here, Chad, they're native? They certainly are, Tim. A lot of them are endemic too to the area and we've so collected the seeds and the and cu cuttings from up the back of the property, and that's what you, we've created here. Public gardens around the country actually would dream of having the resources that we have to have been able to produce this magnificent climate. You can't believe that you're at a horse show. It's so just peaceful and serene in this place. Well, that's what we've tried to create here, Tim. We don't want it, just, it's not all about the horses. If you're not interested in the horses sometimes, you can just come down here have a picnic, walk through the garden and enjoy it. So one of the features of coming to an event here at Wollinga, Chad, is the fact that you can go on a tour and people can actually get behind the scenes at this great property. Yes, Tim, yeah, behind the scenes is you can go see all the generators, how they all runs, the Tesla battery system. Uh, we can see how the gardens all cr were created and we can certainly go down and see all the arenas as well. It's just the tour is well recommended. So the gardens here are over 10 acres. How many people, Chad, does it take to keep them looking as, as amazing as they are? Well, Tim, it normally take, takes about two or three guys full time, but at the moment there's only one here at the moment. But in, in the growing season, two or three guys, and then in winter time we mainly concentrate on mulching the gardens, keeping the weeds under control. So that requires about four or five guys. The drought in 2019 saw Borley Point have 50% of its annual rainfall. We've just seen 300 mils, suddenly the grass is growing, so it's great to see the gardens bouncing back after a much needed drink. Yeah, Tim, well the rain has been, certainly been good to us. The grass was looking dead a few weeks ago, now it's growing behind us. One of the feature here in the gardens and all around Wollinga is the sandstone. Tell me, where's this stone that we see here come from? Well, Tim, most of this stone you see here, it's all been dug out onto the excavation site. We dig it out in big boulders and then we reuse it, we break it up even, make retaining walls and it makes a big feature rock as well. Well Chad, it's been so wonderful to chat to you. Thanks for giving up some time in your busy day to tell us about some of the other parts of Wollinga Park. Now, Tim, it's a pleasure here working with you and the team. It's a great team and I look forward to working with you guys in the future. Such a tough job does that man have there. Does a super job. We all love working for Chatty. He's like uh, the boss that you always wanted to have. I hope he watches this because, <laughs> you know, you always want that help. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Hey, um, earlier today we saw Jaden Brown again absolutely dominate the uh, inter class on uh, that beautiful horse of his in uh, and Terry Snows of Sky Diamond. Great to see that combination doing so well and we look forward to seeing it uh, continue its progress but later on this afternoon a very tough class that we saw was the priest and george cdn class huge class big class big numbers some big scores wonderful to see the uh, malawa horse with riley alexander in the saddle of mi certainly sir certainly sir and they certainly performed out there today 71.353 riley 
actually grew up on King Island, can you believe? Yeah, right. Well, very proud exports. A lot of good, good things come out of King Island. Uh, but, yeah, they looked, they looked really impressive out there today. Fantastic score. Um, they, they really looked to be in it for the money. And then, of course, we had uh, Gina Montgomery come along. I think the, the trick here with Riley is that accuracy pays dividend. You know, again, he was very good with his, uh, his uh, flies every third, the fly changes that he was doing and the rolling through there. Very accurate and so wonderful of the uh, lovely Mullower family to back Riley and that horse. Totally. But this horse here, Gina Montgomery. Well, I mean, you talk about Riley out there and say he's on the horse that won the uh, Equestria New South Wales Dressage Horse of the Year and think, can he be beaten? Well, Gina comes out on Fallen with the beautiful um, German imported gelding and they get a fantastic score there with uh, the 71.529. Owned by Sandy and Carol Oatley, of course the Oatley name, this horse was in Europe, it came back to Australia. Gina's only had four outings with it. it and I, I, I watched the test, I was lucky enough to there. There was, there was some mistakes, so still to pick up a mm. 71529, it was a little jumpy into the halt at the finish and a few little other green errors, but a young combination. And this is what this event is all about. It's about seeing those young horses yeah. stepping up in big exposure. You know, this arena's not easy. There's the fountain, which we've talked about at length. There's the big screen, and then there's the audience right on top of you. And <laughs> You don't get that training at home. No, and look, and Gina's just such a seasoned competitor. You and I have seen her around the show ring for, I want to say, 30, 40 years. She's been an extraordinary... She had a stint as a show jumper too, you'll be pleased to know. But uh, she's out there judging now and, and her focus, obviously, clearly dressage and... Um, her experience really showed today. It most certainly did, and we look forward. This is their first time at Wallinga, so it's great to have her down here. She didn't do show one, so to pick up a win on day of event two is a super effort. Well, Lindsay, you will have seen as you drive in, everyone will have seen, there's construction going on everywhere. Yes. Chad, me, and the team just dream of the day when we run a show without a construction site around us. <laughs> Not sure when that's going to happen, but we sent the guys out to give us a quick visual update on the show jumping arena and the camp draft arena, which both will be open later this year. Well, make sure you get down here to the Gold Buckle Camp Draft. It's the 14th to the 16th of May or the show jumping the 17th to the 20th of September. All the information on our website. Well, in the main class today, of course, was the Grand Prix special. It is always the test. The riders love to ride. The spectators love to watch Melissa Galloway. She's been the bridesmaid all <laughs> week long. I actually feel for Melissa because this horse here, any other year, would have won every one of these classes. A 71, 2, 3, 4... A PB, you think, is what you're going to tell me for her in the, yeah, in the special? Yeah, she should get a PB. And look, this is so exciting for her too. She's 27 years old, uh, been competing on the international circuit, but within New Zealand. This is their first time outside of New Zealand on the international circuit. And Windermere, Joe Bear, like Joey, he's just extraordinary. They look stunning together. And uh, yeah, PB today. So they'll be pretty happy with that. Sired by Johnson. I actually met the breeder this morning, David. He's out from New Zealand to watch the horse go. And... Uh, uh, these PBs keep falling and this arena is just absolutely 
proving that we give our riders the world stage and they step up time and time again. You're right, we had five PBs today. Um, Marvin Smink had one on Haya. Uh, we had Alicia Targa getting a PB, Mary Warren, and of course, this lady here. Can she just wow us anymore? Mary, Hannah, and Kalanta are a, a 72.319%. These scores are world class, and we keep saying it five time Olympian. We are all now on the Mary Hanna to the, <laughs> yeah. to the Tokyo Olympics. It's almost as exciting watching the judges' scores come through in the broadcast boxes, watching the test itself. A nine came through for the Piaf, and you're just watching going, where's the next party trick? They're extraordinary. They're, they're just so neat together. A nine for Piaf is just outstanding. And, and these are the sorts of scores that that judges, when they see it, they'll reward it. And that's what we learnt at the forum the other day. Give the judges a reason to give you those scores. Don't give them a reason to take it away. Well, I just think you must get here tomorrow. The freestyle under lights in this arena is going to be absolutely sensational. And I can tell you now, Dorothy Schneider is going to be riding Jenny Gerke and Rose Dior's Centaur tomorrow night at about 10 past six. Wow. We've seen a ride on the world stage. Come and see her here in person. Tickets available at the gate. Get down here because it's going to be huge. Six o'clock tomorrow night, we kick off our VIP function. First horse in the arena at 6.40. Lindsay, I hope you can join us. Oh, I'm excited. I wish I was sneaking into the Dorothy Schneider dinner right now. Well, there's lots going on here at Wollonga, but from here at the park. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be back bright and early, 7.30 start. We hope you can join us. Until then, from Wollonga Park, good night.